Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Goobers and Screens Book Club. Uh, with me is Brandon. Say hi, Brandon. Hello, Kyle. Today, we're talking about Aaron Carr Part 2, specifically Aaron Carr, the Hueco Mundo sneak entry portion of Aaron Carr. Fancy. It even has a name and everything. Yeah. I looked at the wiki a few months ago, and I split them up into very fancy names. Yeah, so we're back. Back with it. This is this is really soon. This might be the shortest period of time between two Bleach recordings, I think. What can I say, man? Uh, Bleach is no longer mid. It's peak. It's peak. It's peak fiction. No. I call it Peach now. <laughs> I'm not calling it that. Now, even if I were to agree. Actually, no. If I, if I agreed it were peak, I would call it Peach. But, yeah. It is um, peak, though. It is peak. Why, okay, look, look, look. I'm still not going to redact my previous statements of ever, like, most of what I read before Aaron Carr, I, I would call mid, right? I know, I know Bleach fans are foaming at the mouth with the Bleach that they've consumed angry at me. Like, I, I get it, I get it. I don't think this portion's mid. Like, I, this, this portion, I thought, uh, the later parts of what we last read and this, I thought this would be pretty good. Albeit, has its issues, but I thought this was pretty good. I, I thought it was like, you know, I, I, I'm getting the, the Bleach hype now. What about you? Yeah, no, totally. I'm I am thrilled to, to read forward more. I got I really enjoyed this little section here. Yeah, this was this is a good section. So shall we just uh, get right into it? Sink our Let's. teeth into it. Yeah. So looking off my notes, uh, first we we cut back to the thirteenth captain. Is is his name Ukitake? Uh, yes. Yeah, Ukitake. He's watching Ruki and Orihime train, and he's commenting like, "Wow, I can't believe it's been." like one month and you know one thing that i okay a positive period of bleach i know bleach has its very very blatant training arcs aka what ichigo did before soul society and what he did with like the hollow mask uh i actually like bleach's training arcs and i also like how for other characters it's done quickly right like a train typically training arcs they feel very slow and they're just and not too enjoyable to read because just how slow they are at some points and I, I like how for other characters they just kind of like they give like they give the the quick the spark notes of it you know where it's like wow they've been training for a month and like here's what they've done yeah it's good pacing it keeps up with like good pacing I would agree and then in the middle of their training uh oh the some Aaron cars show up back in our back in the Earth world uh because the other Soul Society captains I forget like they were they were out like scouting I think yeah they were out. And the Aaron cars attacked. So yeah, well, they were just uh, it was Hitsugaya and them, right? We're just out, I'm out and about. Sure. They were on their little uh, little training, whatever. And then yeah, sure enough, this little sky opened up. Oh yeah, no, no, they, they were training, right? Because they were like, I hate my sword, or Chica's like, my sword's dumb, and Rangi, who's arguing with Toshiro, is like, Hey guys, can you like shut up, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Door <laughs> opens, and there's there's four of them that appear there. There's Yami, that who we know. Uh, we see a new number six whose name is Loopy. Uh, dog, 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 like the dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Were you thinking of that like nonstop every time you saw her name? I was waiting to drop that on you in the middle of recording. Yeah, because there's there's Yami, Loopy, there's uh, if it's German, Wunderweiss, uh, the, the new kid. And then uh, Rim Job. What's fun with Rim Job here is he doesn't have the number six anymore. They're they're bullying the fuck at him for yeah, it. Yeah, he got I, removed because he because he fucked it up. Yup. And so okay, what happens after this? Let me let me see let me see. Uh, okay, so Yami, uh, Lupi, and Wunderweiss they they attack like the the main captains that are there. Rim Job's pissed. Rim Job wants that Rim Job run back. You know, so he yeah. he pisses off somewhere and is like, I'm going to go rim job Ichigo. And so he leaves. And then uh, Ruki is like, oh shit, sorry Orihime, I gotta leave and I gotta go help. Uh, and then in the middle of fighting, Luffy's like, you know what? This is boring. All four of you, come at me at once. So yeah, that was... I, I, I like this as an intro. It's just so funny how like in the past three or four fights, it's just like, they, <laughs> they just kind of drop in at random. And it's like, alright, let's fight. Yeah, they just like pop out and they're like, "All right, cool, let's get it." Yeah, but it has a purpose uh, this time. 
No, it, it does. Like, I mean, okay, look, every time they've done it has been has had a purpose, right? So oh, like, yeah. let me think. The first time it was just Yami no Kuyora, and it was like we need to we need to go kill Ichigo, and then Ichigo basically a scouting like, thing, right? Like, yeah, just just scouting. Second time was uh, Rim Jobs fun. You know, fun little ride there where he got some of the five other like lower numbered air cars killed. Uh, good, good way to show the threat that they were facing, right? And then this uh-huh. is this is the this is the third invasion, right? I'm not misremembering anything. Uh, yes, I believe you're correct. This is the third invasion, and this time it does have a, a pretty significant purpose. I'd say yeah. the most most important invasion yet. Easy. So, uh, Kisuke leaves Renji and Chad to go help them. And yes, yeah, so we have some of the fighting. Um, just checking our minutes real quick. Okay, okay. So, uh, as you know, they're fighting uh, uh, Loopy. Uh, there, there are two things, and then we can talk about like this as a whole. Uh, Kisuke shows up and like saves Frank Eager from being killed, and then the the rookie Wonder Wunderweiss he just starts attacking uh, uh, Kisuke, and then um, Ichigo fights Rimja, and he pulls out the Hollow Mask. I really like that. I I thought that was cool. That's kind of badass. It was kind of badass, Tim. I'll admit, I'll admit, I I got the I got like the the lead pipe monkey brain moment there. I was like, yeah, oh, it was, oh. it's pretty badass. It was pretty badass. He pulled out the mask. Uh, yeah. So just it was nice seeing Ichigo. Like, it's always nice seeing a character finally. You know, for as much as we'll like poke fun at like training arcs or like, oh, finally they're like they're strong enough. Like. It was cool seeing him just kind of kicking Grimjob, fuck Grimjob shit. Damn it, I'm sorry. Yeah, for no, you're, I forgive you. I forgive you. Yeah, no, Thank totally. You. I think it's always fun to see the um, the evolution of that, you know. Mm-hmm. Where, and I'm also glad that they didn't give him like everything off the bat, right? No, because he had 11 seconds. And then and I was so, there, like, it's like I I can appreciate that. Yeah, and then uh, one thing that I like, it's like, you know, the bluff that you said, it's a good demonstration of his growth, but also this exact same arc shows that he's still not as far as he can go, because the good news is he has 11 seconds or bullying the fuck out of a rim job, but the bad news is when those 11 seconds end, and then I, each goes out of breath and rim job's like, wow, you must, like, you, you don't have good control over it yet. I'm going to kick your ass now, and I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And then yeah, it's also it's, the the implications of how is that going to translate over to Heiko Mundo. Uh-huh. It'll be interesting to see, really. I, I think that it's a nice little setup there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll give Ichigo credit here for as much as I, you know, didn't like the portion with Byakuya. Like, the growth for Ichigo, not, not numerically like power scale, right? Because, you know, I mean, the, the, I don't want to get into the whole, like, the... But yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You're a tool, I guess it would be a good word for Bleach. Like the the mental and spiritual growth of Ichigo, it's been fun to watch. Just seeing how like he changes and evolves, and you know he finally you know he has control over his hollow. He can get, use it for like eleven seconds, and I I feel like it's going to grow to a significantly longer yeah, time. Probably, yeah, yeah, probably. But for now, it's like I can appreciate that there's a limit. I think it's also a testament to how much work he's put in. Yeah, man, man's put in work here. She she kind of mopped the floor with rim job for a bit honest until the reverse rim job happened that was crazy so then um let's see okay during this all right th- this this was a really like the start to a really good portion so or he was like i want to go back to earth too i want to go help so you know they're like all right cool we're gonna send like two two dudes with you you're gonna go um and bad like, no, choice yeah, bad, awful, dumb, stupid choice, not knowingly, but just, uh, Orihime's passage gets invaded by Okuyora, who assaults the two guys, she, she saves them, and he's like, that's not just healing magic, like, I, I literally, like, murdered these guys, like, you, you're, you're, you're saving them, that's incredible, hey, you should come with me and join me, if you don't, I'm gonna kill your friends, so, so yeah, that happened, uh, this, that was, oh god, that was just a really cool moment where, or he may have to make the choice. I mean, obviously, you know, like, the choice, the ultimatum. Like, obviously, she's going to pick saving her friends. But uh, that that moment comes back into play later. But just the arrival of Okuyora, that was that was a really good, like, cliffhanger. For, I think yeah. it was, like, four. Yeah. No, that, yeah, imagine- then that panel's so icy, bro. 
imagine having that and then having to wait uh, 60 filler episodes, so 60 weeks to get back to the main action. That'd be crazy. But is that that's not how Bleach's filler works, right? Like they put it in between arcs. Uh, yeah, no, they didn't split up arcs. Okay, okay. So yeah, it's like not like apparently Naruto does that, which is whack. Oh, Naruto's. Uh, side note, Naruto fans, you guys are dumb if you disagree. You, That's even so true. I, <laughs> I haven't seen Naruto, but from what I know about it, they just shove filler like right in the middle. Hell, there's episodes that are labeled half filler, Brandon. Where uh, by that, it's 20 minutes of filler, and then the last two minutes are something plot relevant. <laughs> exactly. <gasps> so anyway, anyway. Um, let me let me see where we're at right now. <laughs> In my notes, I put end of chapter two thirty three beach art. I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that's oh, bro. Oh. Kubo wild. Kubo with all these old characters on there. Kubo, you you beautiful bastard. Honest, honest. This dude doesn't cap. You're you're you're, no you're kizzy, work, bro. Your work is significantly appreciated, and I salute to you that that was ooh, that was that was such a good that was special that was really special new, yeah the bleach beach art oh anyway uh so yeah over you know demands like or Hime, you, you got you, you gotta come with me you don't really have a choice and then it cuts back to more of the fighting i wasn't too engaged by the loopy fighting like a that's a, that's one thing with bleach where it's like a lot of the filler fight that i say filler not in a mean yeah, way yeah, like yeah, a lot no, no I, I get it a lot of the bluff fights where it's like ones like this, like with like Loopy, I w I didn't really care all that much about it. It was right. it was having that moment where um, Toshiro was like, "Too late, you thought I was dead." I throw like I took all of the water within the surrounding atmosphere, and <laughs> what was it? He said something like, "I have like a hundred or like a thousand weapons or something prepped," and it's like, "Yeah, sorry, eighty or ten pulls was enough." I was like, "That that was a cool one liner." Yeah. I, no. I, I'm biased towards ice powers, so I, by default, man, I have to, I have to ride or die with my man Toshiro here. That Honest. was cool. Yeah, that was, that was a cool ending. I, I'll agree with you. I didn't really think the fight was anything special. What I enjoyed more was watching Kisuke mind game the fuck out of Yami. Honest, bro. <laughs> this is the first time we've gotten to see Kisuke. One, he didn't release his impacto. We have no clue what his impacto's power is. And um, at least as far as I remember. I'm oh, sorry. Uh. You said one, that, and what were you going to say? Two, we get to see that he uses, like, a clone power. I don't know if that'll ever come back. But it was so, cool. It was a neat little thing. So, for uh, you Bleach fans who don't remember, uh, all, all uh, two of you watching. Um, hey, we got three on the uh, End of Soul Society, so. Yo, what, cr no way. Honest. No kizzy. No, wasn't, that wasn't just you and I and uh, one of the other goobers? No, I never watched it. I don't, either I don't watch our videos. <laughs> uh, what what happened there was Yami had this because I think Wunderweiss like attacked them first and then Yami took over. If not like Yami, like Wunderweiss jumped near him and then I think Yami threw a projectile. Either way, Yami got into a fight with Yusuke, or, like started fighting, and he has this like really fast projectile attack. And I I appreciate this right like the the fights this section have been a lot more like mind gamey where you know like a Tosho where it's like you thought you killed me it's like you should have you should have like confirmed the kill like that was your mistake is your downfall and he's yeah. case like I have this plan right like I, I swap myself out with the portable key guy he's like only I could probably do it like that that was just cool and then just the fact that Kisuke kept on being like you should stop trying it, it gave me like it's what minor Jojo's was like it gave me like Anubis flashbacks where Kisuke's like you're never gonna hit me with that attack twice like it's just yeah. it's just not <laughs> yeah I've I've analyzed your move. Um, and I thought that was going to be like his little technique thingy. It was kind of like an Anubis thing where you can't hit him with the same attack twice. I was like, that's broken. It'd also be no. really cool to have for a person like him. It would be, but I think in this case, it was just like, I've analyzed, like, Kisuke is just... No, yeah, definitely. Kisuke. Definitely. It's just Kisuke, but you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like, you know. That's so true. I hate that little guy. <laughs> so... Yeah, no, that was that was a good fight. Uh, good, good job, Kubo. That was that was a fun section, showing off more Kisuke without even having to release his unpacked though. That was I, I give you I give you a rousing round of a thumbs up. And then after that, 
uh, Rukia goes in to save Ichigo from getting rim jobbed. And I put in my notes specifically, to, there's two lines. Rukia saves Ich Ichigo, parentheses, okay, slightly better than no diffing D Roy since A, she trained for one month with Orihime, and B, Ichigo significantly damaged a rim job before Rukia showed up. And then the other one says, never mind the above, rim job almost killed Rukia. <laughs> it's so true. But yeah, no, the, with, with Rukia, right? Like, when you want to power, like, when you want to increase a character's power, you don't do it like how you did with the D Roy encounter. That's still by far, like, one of the lowest lows of Bleach. If, you know, you give give them off screen training, like they, they did that with Orihime and Rukia for like a month. That's that's fine. I, I at that point I could believe that she could fight a Baron car and you know, since Rimjob was injured, like yeah, it's more believable, but just again, I, I still I still have judgment against Rukia, and it's not her fault now, it's just what Kubo did to reintroduce her. Definitely. I would one hundred percent agree. Yeah, so I mean that's that was neat, and then uh, Shinji shows up to you know save them from her job. Bro, he is dripped out. Yeah, with his mask. Oh, that was cool. That was Honest, really cool. dude. Like there are very few people that have had more drip than he had in that moment. I was hyped, dude. So okay, this dude's legit, on. bro. Right, I, I need you. I need you to count with me. How many times a character is saved in this section? Okay. All right, all right, alrighty. So the first one I think is Rengiku's about to be like killed and then uh Kisuke shows up and saves her okay okay and then we have so i think that's it for that like there's no other saving in that sequence right uh-huh uh, after that rukia saves uh saves ichigo right so that's number two and then we have uh shinji showing up to save them so that's three then we have Okuyor coming out to bail out uh, rim jobs. So that's four. And if you want to count it, Orihime did save them by going with that. So that's like five whole saving sequences. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, and, and again, I might just be, I might just not pay attention to it as much in like some other shonen that have it like blatantly a lot. But just I don't know why the saving people really stuck out to me a lot it's i'm not gonna call it like a completely bad thing it's just it's very noticeable is all i would say yeah and more than just this section right like uh you know in, like the previous fight it's like the very first like scouting mission or like the one where rim jobs like hey get them get them boys and then they all attack it's like care being safe and that's fine and i get it like they don't weaker characters but it just it just felt very noticeable i know that might be a weird point to bring up but it just it felt no, I, I agree. I think definitely it's, um, I mean, I wouldn't call it a flaw in the writing, right? Oh, but, but like, it's just, it's just kind of like Fujimoto using the multiple pages. Yeah. Where it's or like, it's, it's like, not bad. Well, I, actually, in the Fujimoto case, like, I actively like it. I think that it's a very good trope. I wouldn't say that I actively like this. I definitely don't mind it. It's definitely not bad. Uh, um, but it's just, it's, just it, it's, it's, it's a, a quirk of the author. <gasps> it's a quirk of the author. Right? No, 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 not now, not now. You can't say that. It's not the right. It's not the right series. You got to read Fairy Tale <laughs> before that. <laughs> Due to Walter White saying not now, not now. That's so true. Yeah. After that, um, so yeah, well, saves Okura saves her job, and it's like, all right, mission accomplished. They leave. All the iron cars. Whoop! They get EBDB back to Hakamundo. That's true. That's true. So then. This this was very cool. Like that, I like Aizen, right? Aizen's Aizen's smart. I, I've seen him on the list like smartest anime character. I'm not I'm not opposed. I think Aizen is very smart. Rose is genius. Here's why, right? Like I was confused when I first read this. I was like, okay, why are they going about it this way? Like literally kidnap her. But no, I I Kubo Kubo, you you were right. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I gotta I gotta give you that one. So. What happens is, you know, Okoyora gives Orihime a chance to, to to say goodbye to a person. She gets 12 hours to say goodbye, and that's it. Like, after that, you know, you have to, you have to just do whatever and then go to Hikomundo with them. So, Orihime, and, oh God, you, you sent me a picture of this, right? This was a really good section where Ichigo is asleep, and because Orihime is, like, wearing a collar that makes her, uh, I think, like, imperceivable to most of like yeah most is it a collar or is it a ring it doesn't really I, matter i just i thought it was a ring i thought i mean either way it, yeah. yeah it doesn't matter 
you, you might remember more of this, but I really liked her talk where she was like talking to Ichigo and was like, you know, you know, it's crazy. Like I could have been born anywhere else. And she named like five of the places she said, and all five of me and all five of those places all would have still fallen in love with you. I was like, oh, that's so fucking good. That's, that's good writing. It is very good writing. And then, I, I think after it was, I wish I want to go back and get it. Kubo had an idea for uh, Orihime's character, and boy, is he executing. He's, he's done... I figured, based on, like, what some friends have told me, I thought Orihime was just gonna get, like, cast to the side. I She's... She's been treated pretty well so far. In Honest. terms of, like... In terms of what a lot of female characters get... Like, <laughs> no, bro. <clears throat> who? I was, Sorry, who? <laughs> 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 Yeah, uh, more like I'll get I'll give Kubo credit. Dude doesn't care if uh, it's a guy or a girl. He'll he'll write him good. Honest, he doesn't. He yeah. no kizzy. Unlike Kishimoto, the guy who writes Naruto. Unlike Kishimoto, Kubo Kubo does it better in my opinion. It's true. Yeah, uh, and and for the Naruto fans who are filming at the mouth, I have watched like the first. 70 or 80 episodes so i at least like to believe i have some context because no you know like everything about it honestly you I watched, watched you watch like one meme youtube video and like <laughs> read some wiki pages dude i think you're like the genius at naruto <laughs> <I am. laughs> it's so true look i've read a third of i can definitively conclude or he a thumb stupid stinky bad character no kizzy none at all <laughs> But no, our, our Hime characters, it's... I, I like how Kubo's been writing with her this this sequence. Where It's one of those where, yeah, she's, like, being kidnapped, and it's like, oh, you know, the, the titular female... Uh, or it, it doesn't or Hime or something literally mean, like, princess. Um, I mean, the Hime does, right? Hime, I, yeah. I, I don't remember what the, the Ori Hime yeah, like, like altogether princess, means. Uh, you know, pretty typical, but, like, her power's pretty good. And it makes sense that they'd want it. And I like the way in which they go about basically kidnapping her. Because, well, let's put a pin in that, right? That We'll come back to that later. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. She, she can say goodbye to someone. And she says goodbye to, to Ichigo, and then she leaves, right? And it's like, yeah, it's weird. So, uh, they wake up, and they find that Orihime has been abducted. and Because uh, they're all they're all on, like, the, the call with Jin or Yusai. And Ichigo's like, no, she wasn't abducted. I, I woke up and like I could I could throw bro I could smell her on me I could smell her on me bro she did not get kidnapped yeah, he he was uh he was fighting that and like nope we can only assume that even if you are right she she betrayed us and so we're not gonna help like we're not gonna help anyone who's betrayed us all right uh full society team pack, pack it, it up, up. yeah <laughs> said that at the same time that's pretty base pack it up yeah. it's over. Yeah, so that was... Oh, God. Again, I'm sorry. I just feel like I've been recapping a lot of this so far, but I this was a, this was a pretty good sequence where all the characters are like, we want to go help. And Jenner Yusai... Like, Jenner Yusai makes a good point, though, where he's like, guys, we have bigger and better fights to prepare for. Like, it, it's one of those where he <laughs> cuts to John Tron eating popcorn. It's like, the problem is they're both right. Like, both sides make a pretty convincing point. But then Jenner Yusai is like, uh, Kenpachi, Byakuya number one, go bring back everyone. And then uh, they show up and like, all right, time to. I, I put my notes, quote unquote, escort them back to Soul Society. Where Jenry says like, hey, we need everyone back here. We're prepping for the war. Sorry, Ichigo, no one's gonna be there in like the normal world. We have our own stuff to take care of. Bye bye. We'll give they, you a call they, though. <laughs> we'll give you a call though. <laughs> we'll check in later. That's so, so true. Yeah, they leave and he, oh god, like, I forgot school existed in Bleach because Ichigo goes back to school after like a month. Yeah, of being dude. Ichigo's 15. He might be 16 at this point. Yeah. Bro is young. Dude, it is so weird being like five years older than this guy. No, right? Like, if, if I, like, God, Ichigo's like our height, right? No. He's probably he's probably a bit shorter than us. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, I, let, let me, let me I, got, I gotta look this up. I gotta look this up. Because, like, because the people that are our height, like Jotaro, Joseph, Jonathan, are all our height. We're doxing right? our Brandon. Yeah, we are doxing our height, aren't we? Uh, Ichigo I, Bleach. I'm going to tell you the canon size or the unofficial size. Um, he is, he is five foot nine. 
looks like. That's pretty average height. Uh huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's also Rukia. Four. Rukia is four nine. We were I mean, almost she... two feet taller than her. <laughs> and, but Brandon, she's legally like a thousand years old. Exactly. I, I don't. I don't know how old she is. I'm not like. I don't really care. I, I like Rukia as a character. No, not like you know what they what? say. But beware of the man who has the the age of consent in every state memorized. <laughs> There's some <laughs> things you don't want to be able to know off the top of your head, Kyle. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Uh, you are. You are not capping. I don't. So, I don't cap at all. Let me, let me see where we are in the notes. Okay, so yeah, he's back at school, and Tatsuki, the, her friend, is like, "Where is she?" And he goes like, I don't know. It's like, where is she? And he's like, look, none of your business. So uh, buzz off, woman. And then she punches his head through a, like an entire glass window at the school. Uh -huh. I thought that. And then, you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, stop beating up Ichigo. Like, quit, quit, being, quit doing that. And then uh, Ichigo again is like, hey, just like mind your own business. It's not your battle. Like, don't, yeah. don't. Pursue. So, yeah, he's pretty down in the dumps. I, I, I liked that scene. Because no, it was showing Ichigo struggling with this again, right? Yeah, he's worked I... so hard to get stronger after losing to the Aaron cars. Only to go back, lose to the Aaron cars again. And then he got stronger again, lost to the Aaron cars again, and now Orihime is gone. Yeah. I mean, dude has been on a rough patch. Honest. It's, he's been, uh, yeah, he's not been doing so hot with it. Uh, one of the tropes that I always really, really enjoy is moments like that, where, like, a weaker character will, like, hit a strong character really hard and makes, like, a big scene, and it's obviously, like, they didn't take any damage, because that didn't hurt Ichigo, right? I mean, dude, dude's been knocked no. through, like, building for shit. No. Um, that did, you see the kind of blood that guy bleeds? Yeah, no, he bleeds bleach itself. That's true. And so... Yeah, man, man's could literally get stabbed by like a thousand swords. Like, <laughs> just a Tuesday for me. Yeah, no, that didn't hurt him at all. Yeah. But I, I like that trope because it's like, I, I, it's hard to put into words why I like it so much. Uh, I'd say, I guess the best way to word it is like, it it's a good way of showing off like they're they're willing to take the hit and just like try to talk afterward. You know, it, like it'd be excessive for him to like block and catch her hand because like he has no need to. It's a bit excessive. So to just take the hit is a lot cooler, for, in my opinion. I love the trope of a character that's like in a normal like setting, right? Because Ichigo is just like a normal high school student. Yeah, right? yeah. Gets like incredibly strong, right? Goes on his mad adventures, right? Whatever. Yeah. And then comes back to the normal setting. Like, a, like a, a very, I don't even think you would know. I mean, you know him, but like, like Frodo and Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin from Lord of the Rings. Like coming, like seeing them come back after their journey to Mordor was like, dude, and like seeing that like they're there, like in the familiar environment, but like nothing's the same, and nothing's ever gonna be the same. Like that, yeah. that's just like, oh, dude, I eat that for breakfast, dude. I eat that for breakfast all day, all day. I eat that for breakfast, dude. That is yeah. that is so cool to me to see Ichigo like interact with his friends. And now he's like some badass captain level soul reaper, right? Who's been training with his hollow side. And then and then he's just interacting. Well, I guess he hasn't been training with his hollow side at this point. Has he? No. Yes. Point being, he's he's a soul reaper and just to interact with his normal friends and just like that 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 would have been something that Tatsuki had done either way, even if he were or even if he was or was not like a soul reaper. And then the edgy line of just just stay away from me. They're like, yeah. they're like, keep her away from me. Dude, I eat that for breakfast, bro. I eat that for breakfast all that day. Not... That dude, that is a three course meal for me, bro. Honest. I read that. I said, man, I'm stuffed. It's like a Shanks <laughs> fan after getting two seconds of him in a chapter every 10 years. I, I mean, you know. <laughs> I do know. I do know. Yeah. So a after that. Uh, as Ichigo's leaving school after the, the whole blow up scene, Kikisuke shows up. He shows up and is like, Hey, Ichigo, I have a way for you to go to Hoikamunda. I know that you're going to do it anyway. So I thought I'd help you. 
and it's like we, we need to rescue Orihime and he you know he takes some blame on himself he's like yeah it's my fault I tried I, tried, I was too soft on her I should have just told her what was up and it's like that's that's realistic to not want to hurt her feelings and then regret that where it's like I should have I should have just told her why yeah yeah so then after that oh god I bring it I eat this shit for breakfast right here the next what's about to happen next not literal shit but I eat what's about to happen next for breakfast uh Chad and you, you show up, and they're like, we're coming with you, and you go, oh, Brandon. Bro, after, I pogged so hard. After, like, a hundred chapters of them doing nothing, I, it was probably not that much, but, like, after a long time of them doing nothing, to, okay, Brandon, tell me if you, heard the, if you haven't heard this one before. Ichigo's female friend gets basically kidnapped, and him, Chad, and you, you have to go invade another whole new dimension to go fight and get them back. I've never seen that done before in Bleach, and I was so freaking excited when I saw Chad Yu you show up. Kubo crazy for something as insane as that. <laughs> he just did it again, and everyone loves it. It's like, he just did it again. Ugh. Yeah. But it works. Uh, I mean, it, you know, you know, say, say what you will about him repeating it. It works. It works it so does. well. That was so hype to see that. I was like, oh, yeah, it's the boys. We're back together works in this case because it's not the primary objective okay it's not the overall objective of aaron Carr itself like soul society was we have to go save for aaron Carr has had a lot of stuff happening on the side and it's like okay but well, one of the objectives is go get Ruki, or uh, to go get orahime like we need to go help her and we, she's not like in any like she's not going to be executed right where it's like they just have to go rescue her before aizen can do like his evil mischief stuff on her so yeah. basically cool. they're going to go rescue rukia or it's not rukia <laughs> a little freudian slip there they're going to go rescue orihime and they don't want to wait until aizen and his goons complete their plan orihime yeah. being catnip cat catnip wow i'm <laughs> you could you could tell it was a long day in class today <laughs> Uh, Orihime was kidnapped, and that really was just like the catalyst of all these events, right? Their focus was on H Hueco Mundo. <laughs> Their focus was on Hueco Mundo for a while before this. Yeah, like yeah. because they they need to stop Eisen. That's that's the big thing going into this. Is they're like we need to stop Eisen. Just like yes. the big thing going into Marine Ford, we need to save Ace. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he's a princess that also got ca captured. Honest. So, oh god! After this, Brandon, I, my 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 adrenaline, my the neurons in my monkey brain activated. Whenever each goes like, you guys should stay behind. And Chad wants to go punch him. Each go blocks and like, so, like shows off a lot of power. And he's like, is that is that strong enough? Are we, are we ready to go? Are you gonna pull this shit again? Let's go, bro. I hope Just, Chad gets to do oh, some good oh, stuff I, this arc. I hope Chad gets to do some cool stuff this arc. Oh, oh, that was oh. Mwah. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Bringing back Chad. I, I'm good with more Chad. I like Ch L. I love Chad as a character, and to finally see him get more time in the, the spotlight, right? Because like the last, the last like super ultra mega important thing he did was when he fought like the eighth captain and lost. Yeah, and that was literally I think over like 100 Chad was going at this point. Easily. Yeah, and so to finally have Chad come back, right? Like it's just been so long. They're making Chad so cool and awesome. Yeah, you're used there too, but like Chad, you know, just Chad is back. Oh, it was good. It was good to see that. Thank Kubo, thank you for not being like other manga authors, even though this might come back to be horribly dated and bite me in the ass in the future. Uh, thank you for keeping your characters relevant. I appreciate it. Most okay, of them. Thanks. Most of them. Most of them relevant. Most of them relevant. Kurosuchi, Kurosuchi. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, mo most of them. Cone. Like. Uh, Jinta and Ududu. Sorry, we'll, say most. Think, we'll say most. Thank you for keeping most of the fighter characters relevant. I have to drink to that. Yeah. So, they, they leave. Uh, they go to the portal. Because... Wait, hang on, hang on. There's one thing before that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, this is weird. Tatsuki and the other kid. I forget his name. Uh, they show the up. The other two. They, two. I can't remember the names either. Oh. Sorry, there's two students with Tatsuki. Yeah. Ichigo's yeah. two friends. I can't remember their names. Uh, one yeah, of them I, is the dude that uh, uh, Ikaku and uh, Ichigo yeah, that's, that's the with guy. has a hot sister. Yeah, that's the guy I was referring to. I don't remember his name. I don't. Was there another one there? Yeah, and then his friend. I can't oh, remember cool. their names. 
Yeah, so uh, Kisuke meets some after they leave through the portal. And then, okay, I'm, I'm going to... I gotta look this up. So, um, I'm gonna pull up chapter 240, because this is where uh, Aizen and them, they explain a lot of uh, how the power works. So, you know, at, at the start of it, they leave through the portal. I'm just swiping through it. And then it cuts to them in, like, the Hueco Palace. All right. And so this this was a real this was probably one of my favorite parts of this where it's like they're finally meeting and he's like or he can you like demonstrate the the power and he's like well you know or he may uh Eisen Eisen being as cool as he is I'm being dripped out to the the socks as he is is telling her some some Aaron cars are doubtful towards your abilities would you care to show off your powers. Because, you know, Loopy's like, all right, we risked our neck for, like, some girl. And then um, she fixes Grimjow's... Ha! Freudian slip right L, so L, 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 L. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, she fixes Grimjow's arm by just saying, I reject. And it comes back after everyone doubted her. And everyone's, like, freaked out. And so I want to read off. I want to read off what Eisen says specifically. Okay. Uh -huh. So everyone's freaking out, and he's like, "Indeed, it's neither of those things." Where it's like, "It's not. Uh, it's not healing." Uh, uh, Okior believes it's a form of temporal or spatial regression. And they're like, uh, you know, he's like, "Yeah." And then Loopy's like, "No way! How can such a power be possible?" Because indeed, neither of those things. It is a rejection of phenomena. Her powers limit, reject, and deny all phenomena that have affected her subject. She can make it as if the damage never happened. This is far more than temporal or spatial aggression. In fact, it oversteps the limitations set by the gods. Her powers violate divine law. That was a really cool way to like have her power shown off right there. And to get like the official description of it by Aizen. Right? Yeah, I, I, oh, totally. He's like a super genius. Having Orihime's power like slowly be like, oh, I'm a healer and like whatever to like, I reject like phenomenon. That's a really cool wording of it. And there's, do, do you mind if I go on the little My Hero rant real quick? Yeah, of course. So there's a similar power uh, for the, those of you who uh, live under a rock and haven't watched My Hero. In season four, they introduced a character uh, who has very similar ability. Uh, I, I think how it was used in My Hero is kind of dumb and stupid. Uh, I like how it's done here significantly better. That's all I had to say. That wasn't an objective statement. I've just... If you're a My Hero fan, take take the L. Moving back to Bleach, which is definitely better. Uh, yeah, having the phenomenon rejection is really, really interesting. Because then after, like, we see... We can see the, like, the crazy non-limits that this thing has where after that uh he's the rip drops like hey girl can you heal one more thing <laughs> he gets his number back that was burned off of him stabs a loopy and then blows her up based <laughs> that, that was job is so based that was one of my favorite moments of this chapter or not no of the chapter of like this portion that we've read because that was just really funny and it shows just like it's a good way of showing off just how dangerous working these powers are here yeah no that's in i really like how they framed her powers because going into it you're like oh well hers are the weakest right at least chad was able to get some use sure she can heal people but like that's, that's black. It. yeah now, it's, now like... it's a rejection of phenomena like whoa and the question is how did she get that power right is it is it genetic is there something with her bloodline is there something that was gifted to her is she the inheritor of something it, don't say bloodline don't say bloodlines why, why am i not saying bloodlines or right, so don't say bloodlines don't say bloodlines all right so not bloodlines um lines of blood it, there's a lot of questions here as to how she could have gotten her power i for one i'm looking forward to it i also think it opens up the question of what is chad's power now yeah. that we're seeing Orihime is being described like in an in-universe way, what is Chad's power going to be like that? Yeah, I, I wonder. We'll probably figure it out during Chad's fight that comes up. Cause, Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so after that, right, they, I just looked at my notes where he stabs her and blows her up. I just put for the C room job to her. That's C did, didn't he? So 
Um, we see the backstory and how Kisuke, like, he showed up and just let Yuri you help them or help. And he's like, Didn't you make like, I made a deal with my dad? And Kisuke's like, Who gives a fuck? Come on. <laughs> and they just they go. Uh, so this was cool. I, you're, you're gonna probably like this. The scene where Ryukin and Ishin were talking to each other. Yeah, that was really cool. That was that was a good section where what was it? Uh, let me like hang on. Let me let me look for it exactly right because there was a uh, there was a really there was like one line that they were saying to each other that I just thought was interesting. Uh, hang on. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's chapter two forty one. Give me give me a moment. Yeah. Quick, Brandon, entertain. You got you got to entertain. I do. It, it, I've really I really enjoyed this section so far. I think okay. that this is a fun little section. So, all right. So, um, it's them in the room where it's like he left a note and then Ryukin's like, or no, Ryukin's in the room and Ishin's like, oh, looks like you got out. How'd you get in here, Kurosaki? And so they're talking for a bit and he's like, oh, you got your powers back. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I look good as new. So, um... Yeah, so they talk for a bit, and Ishin's like, you let him go, didn't you? He says, mind your own business, I help him get his Quincy powers back, it's no concern of mine what he does with them, or whether he lives or dies, and then Ishin goes, father of the year, or father of the year, you would, uh, wait, sorry, ah, I'm having trouble, I'm having a problem speaking tonight, father of the year, you ain't, and then he says, but I'm a better one than you are, and then Ishin's like, yeah, you're right, which is very, it's a, it's, it's a small little line. But it's an interesting insight into Ishin's character. Because from like what we've seen, you know, he does like he cares about Ichigo and like he cares about his uh, his kids and his family. And it's like, why would he why would he say that Ryukin's like a better dad? Especially given how uh, what, how Ryukin has treated uh Ryu. Yeah. yeah, like he, he, you know, Ishin's done nothing but like, you know, been like overly affectionate, but still like been nice and affectionate and you know, maybe it's him blaming his wife, but it putting that like aside, you know, because that's like the husband territory. Like for the him to be like, yeah, you're probably right. Maybe I'm not the best dad. Like maybe you, maybe you are better than me. Like why? Why would he admit to someone being like a better dad, knowing Ryukin and knowing like how hard he is on uh, your? I don't know. It's just, that was that was a very interesting, interesting line right there. I'm really interested in learning their backstories. I think yeah. learning like about Ishin and. Or use dad. What's his name? Uh, Ryukin. Ryukin. Ishin and Ryukin and Udahara. I think all of that is going to be really cool to learn. Like their backstory. I wonder if Ishin wasn't part of Soul Society. I mean, he's a Soul Reaper, so like you would think so. But I mean, as we can see, you know, that's not the only way to become a Soul Reaper. So. Uh huh. Well, what's up <coughs> next? What's up next? We're, so, four, we're, 40, we're 42 minutes into this thing, Kyle. All right. <laughs> let's try to let's, keep 21 chapters under an hour. <laughs> well, we'll make it We'll make it rather quick. So they're in the underground temple um, that they show up in. And then we have the Yuri, you and Chad fight. And again, uh, you know, to, to make it like kind of quick, this shows off their powers. One thing I really like is how Ichigo's going to fight. And he's like, get behind me. And they're like, dude, we're literally, how dare you say that? We're literally right here to fight. They fight for a bit. And they're like, oh, shit. Or we're, we're struggling against their opponents. And then they just do a really simple tactic that I like of they swap opponents and they start having an easier time because it's like, that's that's a that's a, just a good battle tactic. And I'm sorry, I'm just gushing because so far with Bleach, I just haven't been too intrigued with a lot of what they've done. But just having, you know, simple stuff like that's just, it's been cool to see like, oh shit, this guy like, you know, Ch uh, you know Chad would do better. It's like, oh, you're, you do better. Let's just swap. And then they just clown them. Yeah, no, it's cool to see that. Especially going like, you know, looking at this and being like okay well now they're like like look at how their battle iq has improved right like they've not yeah. only gotten stronger physically they've gotten stronger mentally mentally yeah and it's it's nice to finally have characters like oh Ichigo, you're the main character but we're still characters ourselves buddy back off when they fight exactly this dude gets it so after that they they um they kill those two and it's like they they run out of the temple because those two like they were basically like holding the temple that they're in up so it crumbles they get out and then you have oh god uh the espadas aizen jin and tozen all meet up like all of them literally meet at the dinner table to discuss the intruders 
Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the Aaron cars that we've seen, just because I don't think... I'll be honest, I don't think many of the Aaron cars are memorable. Uh, yeah, I than, mean, I'm guessing they'll be more memorable whenever we get to their fight and we get to see them fight. Yeah, of course. But, like, as is, Aizen, Jin, Tozen, and Rim, Rim Job. Also, with, like, the ones that we know, Okuyori and Yami, like, the, the pre-established ones are memorable. Because, like, nothing about the others stand out immediately. Yeah. And I... Yeah, There's that, that one with the with the massive rack. I don't remember that. He's got the massive rack and like the the like the the collar like halfway up her face. Okay, well, I'll just I'll show you a picture after. Yeah. Um. So after that, room jobs like, all right, hey, oh man, fuck this, I'm gonna go fight Ichigo, and I was like, the hell you are, and then just hits him with a really strong attack and he like kneels over and he's like where you all are gonna go wait in your rooms and when they show up you're gonna fight them we're not gonna worry about this we're fine again for Isaac being really smart I think he should just let the people go out there and murder them me, me personally I think that's what he should do but who, what do I know he, well, he's I mean you know you could say it's better for them to go into an environment and an arena you know, specifically tailored to each Aaron car, as opposed to an Aaron car fighting them in a neutral or potentially, you know, positive zone for Ichigo and them. It that's you do make a valid point. I'm not going to hold. Do it. I think Kubo thought that far ahead when writing this? Probably not. I'll be real with you, but I think that's how you could re rationalize Aizen's actions here. So I'm going to sum up this next portion real quick. They're outside. They're trying to make it into the palace. They see this. Uh, Aaron Carr Kid Nell and his other weird Aaron Carr family. They save them. A big Sandman attacks them. And then Rukia and Renji show up and save them from like the big giant sand pit. Funny crocodile man, right? Yeah. He's made of sand, so you can't cut him, so you gotta use water. Yeah, um, but that didn't really matter all that much because uh, Rukia showed up and just kind of no diffed it. That, that was fine. Uh, and then they beat him up, and it's like, why the fuck? Why didn't you wait for us? And he's like, I thought you guys left. And Rukia and Renji, once again, like Ichigo, did you really think that we weren't gonna leave to come back? Look, Biaki. Like, well, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed look, to think? You guys left. You guys didn't even try to fight it. Look, Biakia number one took us away, but Biakia number two let us go. Okay, we talked to the split personality right there. So that's how we got back. That that's basically what happened. So uh, they join them, and uh, Okuyor goes to tell Orihime, like, okay, look, all your little friends are here. Swear loyalty to Aizen. So she's like, okay, fine. I, I guess I'm loyal to Aizen, Baka. Like, I'm not, I'm not really loyal. Uh, but no, she. I really liked the uh, the symbolism there, right? Because oh, you have her. them breaking down a wall, right? As she says that, I think this is very intentional. So it's like, like her saying that is like breaking her down, right? Like a like a mental wall broke saying that. Yeah, no, that's and a, like, that's like a... I feel like that's emphasized with like you know before it was like alternating panels, but like the last panel where they finally get through, and where she says like I dedicate my heart and soul to Lord Eisen, like that's on like the same panel. I think that's very intentional symbolism by Kubo, and I I wanna I wanna give him props for that. I think I really I really liked that. I'll give him props for that too. Uh, I didn't think too much into it, but no, that's that's a good point to make. Yeah. So. After that, the crew decides to take Nell and the others with them, and it's like, oh shit, five paths, so they all split up. And one thing that I thought was cool is Renji, he did this, this little, like, traditional pre-battle charm. Uh, I thought, it, the translation seemed weird, I thought it should have been, like, a chant, because he said charm, and he started, like, uh, like a mantra, like a chant. Yeah. But it, it was neat to see that, where it was, like, like a pre-battle, like, you know, if our swords clash with others, let us, like, reunite with our swords again or something. I don't know, that was cool. That was, that was Yeah, it's a neat, neat little thing. It's a, it's a good way to show, like, the warrior spirit. I don't, I don't know, just something. It reminded me of that. Now, this this last part was really cool. Like, it, Aizen's a freaking genius. In my notes, I just put Aizen is crazy smart. So, uh, Okuyora, you know, is, like, in charge of Orihime. And this a spot called uh, Noitra shows up. And was like, oh, you're, you're in charge of uh, Orihime, and like was questioning him about that, and he's like, okay, we did everything that we did intentionally. We let her say goodbye to like, you know, kind of like, not, not, it trick her all essentially. Like, we made her think that she had a choice in joining us. Even though she didn't, we gave her the option of that 
and let her say goodbye to where she'd be more welcoming. We also knew she'd go to Ichigo, so when Ichigo went to the others, it was like, yeah, I can feel her spirit energy. It looked like a betrayal. Therefore, Soul Society would say, pack it up and leave, so we don't have to worry about Soul Society joining, like coming here. Uh -huh. Oh, that was just, that was a good reveal, because I, I, I was wondering like, the whole time, like, why did they even let Orhime do that? And then to have that reveal, ugh, oh, so crazy smart. Yeah, whenever initially they were like, Orihime betrayed us, like, could be a traitor. I was like, oh, that was why. Like, like I realized it then. I did. I was like, I was like, that was probably part of Aizen's plan. I was like, Cause that's genius, right? Because then you get Soul Society out the way. Yeah. And then in her room, Orihime's like, you know, she she's like, I, I, I'm not like fully loyal. I'm going to destroy the Hyokyo. And I put in my notes, this will surely end well and yeah. not part of Aizen's master plan to get Orihime to use her power on the Hyokyuko. Yeah, that is exactly what I thought, because, like, after she said that, it cut to a panel of Aizen sitting on his throne, smiling, and it's just like, bro, that's exactly what he wants, dude. That is exactly before, what he wants. Yeah, before I even saw that, I typed it in, and I saw that, I was like, yeah. Because we, so, I mean, we get a little flashback of him talking to her, and he's like, yada, 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 you will use your power to help me, won't you? And then she's like, she's like, I'm, she's like, I will, she's like, I'm going to use my power to destroy it. And it's like, that's what he wants. That's what you're, you're, you're that's what he wants. He's not dumb. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, your betrayal is, is planned. It's just, dude is a genius. Honest. Yeah, man is, uh, man is crazy smart. So to, to cap it off, right? How, how long have we been going? We've been going for a solid 51 minutes. All right, we can make this next part real quick. So anyway, uh, Ichigo split off on his own. Nell catches up to him. And uh, we get the introduction to Aaron Card number 103 with Dordani gives like this really saucy, spicy entrance. I, I liked his entrance. I give, I give it a five star out of her entrance. That was, that was sure. pretty good. That's true. So uh, let's, uh, Ichigo's like, ha, you have three numbers. You're kind of going to be kind of little bits to fight, aren't you? And it cuts the Jin and Tozin with like Wunderweiss like they're all talking to each other and Tozin teaches Wunderweiss about like what the three numbers actually mean because Jin's like oh they're in the layer of the three stars so when a Espada gets demoted they're like given like this extra digit and that's like they're, they're, they're still like nearly on par with Espadas they're just called like Prever like Preveran Espadas now yeah one reason or another, they've been demoted, and so all of the characters about to fight uh, near. How do you feel like with the power scaling here, where they're all about to go fight like Espadas on their own, or like near Espadas? All of them. I think that we've seen that Renji the Espadas <laughs> are weaker without their numbers, because we saw Rimjob kind of get bodied by Hollow Ichigo a little bit whenever he didn't have his number. And it seemed like getting his number back made him more powerful because he was able to no diff Luffy, right? That's so true. So theoretically, getting their numbers taken away weakened them. Well, don't they have the number one hundred three on their body? No, no, no. I think just the um, only the Espadas have the numbers on them. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. either way, like, he's still so yeah. Uh, the only one I'm gonna say, like everyone other than Rin, is probably gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, and then Rinji will probably pull through. No, I, because like Renji's gotten bodied a lot in the past. Renji needed a little girl to show up and save him. That's kind of cringe. Renji is typically pretty cringe. I won't lie to you. Yeah. And then the last part of the sequence was they fought for a bit. Dordoni's like, "Don't underestimate me, boyo." The, like starts fighting back, and then he awakens to his wind bonkai powers. And yeah, that was uh, the end of that. And then picking up next time, which is uh, the next sequence is the the. Aaron Carr, the fierce fight. So I'm guessing we're gonna get like this is gonna be like a big fight section coming up. Yeah, probably. I mean, it looks like we got five <laughs> fights in the in the horizon. Yeah, I'm, I am very excited to see what uh, Kubo has cooking for us next. So yeah, you know, just to, to you know summarize, uh, good sequence. This was you know not a didn't have a whole lot to that I say complain. I didn't have a whole lot to articulate my criticisms with this timing. It was it was well written. I enjoyed it. Uh, this was the most important invasion that these Espadas had early on. I like the Orhime is a, is a traitor kind of sequence, even though I mean, it wasn't. And I liked how they're doing uh, another invasion. And again, I know I 
poke fun at it being like the same thing as Soul Society, but I think it works here since, you know, the, the reasoning isn't just, oh, this is the entire purpose of the entirety of Aaron Carr. It's well, you know, one of the reasons that we need to get our friend back before Aizen does something stupid with her. True. Yeah, yeah no, uh, real quick, what do you think of Nell? Um, I'm wholly indifferent on Nell. I think Nell's cool. Do you know something I don't about him that's going to happen in the future? Nell has a very similar character design to a character that I know. And I <coughs> assume the two are related. Like, I don't know the character, but I've seen the character before. Um, is it a character that hasn't been introduced yet? I have not seen them yet. And so I saw Nell and I was like, she kind of bears a resemblance. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, uh, I can, whenever, I guess... Whenever we finally see this person, I can reveal where I thought they were going to come in because they did not come in where I thought they were going to. Uh, but it'll be it'll be interesting to see. I think that Nellis is an interesting little critter. I think so too. I mean, again, I'm, I'm wholly indifferent on it, but like it's having a character like that pop up and now Ichigo has to not only fight Dordoni but protect him. I think it'll be interesting. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So that's that does it for uh part two of Aaron Carr of the Hueco Mundo sneak entry. So Insane. next we're reading chapters two fifty two through two eighty six. We got a lot on the horizon, got thirty four whole chapters coming up. I know, yeah, it's about one and a half times this. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, well if you're this far in the video, obviously there's something you like, so make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling us um how good our analysis of, of these twenty one chapters are. Um, and if you like this video, go check out Rats Nest, link in the description. Uh, Kyle and I do Chainsaw Man and One Piece. And the next Bleach video will come out whenever it comes out. I don't know how long it's going to take us to read it. I know I'm going to be reading some Bleach tonight. Um, but I, I don't know what our schedules look like, so it'll come out when it comes out. So we will see you all then. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.